to data science pattern course this series is designed to help you master data structures and algorithm using python a powerful and easy to learn programming language whether you are a beginner or looking to strengthen your coding skills this course will take you from basics to more advanced concepts in dsa one step at a time so throughout this course you will learn core concepts we'll cover fundamental data structures like arrays linked lists stacks and queues as well as algorithms like sorting searching and dynamic programming and then we practice with python so python simplicity makes it perfect for learning dsa you will apply each concept to the practical coding examples and then we solve the real world problems we'll tackle popular coding problems from the platforms like lead code preparing you for the technical interviews and coding challenges next is interactive learning each episode will include exercises quizzes and worksheets hosted in the google colab so this will help you to reinforce what you learned so by the end of this course you'll have a solid foundation in dsa and be confident in solving complex coding problems and be ready to ace your technical interviews so let's dive in and start your journey to mastering dsa with python so before we start who am i so so this is my portfolio website this is i did some time long back in 2020 so i was recently graduated from 2021 and then uh, i worked for a company called moneyview and then there i was a software developer and then i switched to a company so this is my portfolio website it, it includes all my technical skills and everything like this i built in 2020 so all website so this is me here by the way so let's quickly jump to the course so first thing so what is dsa dsa is basically data structures and algorithms so so what is the definition of data structures here so these are the ways of organizing and storing data in a computers so that it can be accessed and modified efficiently common examples include arrays linked lists stacks queues trees and graphs and the next is algorithms these are step by step procedures or formulas for solving problems algorithms can range from simple operations like sorting and searching to more complex tasks like dynamic programming and graph traversal so what is importance of dsa in programming So DSA is a backbone of computer science. Understanding how to structure and design the efficient algorithms is crucial for writing optimized and scalable code. So real world applications include database management, operating systems, artificial intelligence and more. So who invented Python? So Python was invented by Guido van Rossum. So it was first released in 1991 and he named the language after the British comedy group Monty Python which he enjoyed. So where is Python used? It's a general purpose language. So basically it's a versatile programming language and used in various domains. So it's it includes web development. Uh, so we have frameworks like Django and Flask and then uh, in data science and machine learning. So libraries like Pandas, NumPy, TensorFlow and scikit-learn. And next is automation and scripting. Writing scripts to automate tasks. And then we have software development. So developing desktop applications. And next is game development. So libraries like Pygame Next is AI and ML. So heavily used for building AI and machine learning models. So why Python for DSA? So basically, Python has a simple syntax and that makes it easy to understand and implement complex algorithms. It has a rich set of libraries and built-in functions that simplify the implementation of data structures and algorithms. So here we can see which companies use Python. So firstly, tech giants like Google. So Google uses Python for various services, including search algorithms and internal systems. Next is Facebook. Facebook utilizes Python in their infrastructure management. Next is Netflix. Python is used for data analysis and backend services. Next is Spotify. So here Python is used for backend services and data analysis. Similarly we have Instagram. Uh, it was originally built using Django, a Python framework. And then next is Dropbox. The desktop client is built using the Python. So what are job opportunities with Python and DSA? So first is software development. So Python developers are high in demand for creating scalable and efficient applications. Next is data science. Python is a leading language in data science, including data analysts, data engineers, and machine learning engineers. So next is web development. So full stack development using Python frameworks like Django and Flask. Next is automation. So the scripting and automation roles. Next is our favorite thing AI and ML. So building AI driven applications and models. Throughout this course, I will be keeping a easy stuff for you to understand uh, data structures and uh, use it efficiently in your day-to-day -day life for programming. So basically, uh, I don't keep much for editing because I want you to go through the talk process I have so that you will get more sort of it. So there would be less of editing, more of genuine uh, showing like what the thought process behind everything. So don't expect much of editing here. So uh, some of the people edit most of the stuff just to show off that they're doing it great. So but like we don't edit it here. so we keep it uh, like plain with you so that like you get the thought process behind and so first let's learn the basic syntax in python 
so let's say you want to print something in python so we just use print and hello world so this is how we execute it you just need to do shift and enter so since this is a jupyter notebook or like uh, it's a online jupyter notebook actually it's a google collab so i'll share the link to this file at the end so that you will also can practice it uh, so here we just execute this print hello world and then that's it like we get this output so this is a basic syntax uh, in python so if you need to print something ju just a simple thing so like uh, like this like we can even print uh, numbers as well like let's say print one we'll print one so yeah so here uh, what are variables basically so variables is something that values is varies so like let's say you have to keep something uh, in memory of, uh, while executing so then you keep something uh, like you, you have that value inside with something right so that's why we keep the variables so here we uh, want the name to catch hold of john so that's why we insert his name with john and then uh, let's say uh, here john is strings uh, which is in double quotes or called strings just a plain text you can say uh, and then next is integer actually anything which is number is integer so basically uh, we have whole numbers in mass right like this like whole numbers natural numbers everything or the numbers comes as in integers so even like uh, if you enclose this string uh, like let's say we have this one so if you keep a is equals to 1 this is not an integer this is string because you're encapsulating it in double quotes if you keep a is equals to 1 then it is integer uh, likewise if you keep a is equal to 0 0.5 it is float how do we check the uh, type we have this type of a we can check right type of a is float so if you keep it 1 the type of a like it is a int and then if you keep it encapsulated in strings the type of a would become string str stands for string so got it right so basically uh, we storing this value into this variable a so variable is something which varies its value right and then uh, we have name john so here if we print name uh, we'll get john so how do we print this let's let me just uh, install the code block here and then let's do print john so it is not defined so basically we have to define this in name uh, like some variables then only we can use so this variable is not defined that's why it, it should throwing error so you got the idea right so here uh, if we keep john in name and print it we get john right so like basically if you don't store this in a variable uh, we'll get an error as you see and then next is our integer so let's say we print a's we get the integer value 20 25 so next is our float let's say we print salary what we get the salary here right okay next is uh, the same thing variables and data types we discussed here so basically what is the data types here is this is string this is integer this is float any anything with precision is float or decimal like we don't have decimal here we call it float everything uh, and then in java we have uh, some integer and begin integer, all those things in order python is very simple it's just like what you think in english basically the python like python is the same plain english okay it's like just as simple as that even if you're a beginner to the python i'll make sure you get most of the course and you will be able to code cp as well so here throughout the course it's i, I gotta keep it very simple for you even if even if you're starting with zero knowledge you'll be getting to hero so here the basic operations include uh, like uh, let's say we want to have something addition or multiplication how do we do that like this like we store the values you, in, you understand right like a is equal to 10 means like we storing the 10 value in a b is equal to 5 is like we storing the 5 value in b and then some some how do we mean by sum so sum is basically addition right a plus b here a plus b is a sum we storing that value in some result so it's cool right like uh, we are storing uh, we're getting the sum and stored in print uh, some result let's say you want to do multiplication in multiplication uh, we represent uh, the operation using this asterisk this is called asterisk like in plain uh, like mathematics so we represent multiplication using this int operator right when it comes to coding we represent using asterisks so that's what we did here i hope you got the idea so let, let, let me just print this so that like it will be clear for you so even if we like since this is an uh, interactive notes we have it print we can just print it like this P uh, product result 50 so simple so 10 into 5 is 50 right that's storing product result so 10 plus 5 is 50 right that's storing some result so 15 yeah so next is condition statements so 
conditional statement is like something we have conditions let's say uh, for you to eligible for oath our uh, system recommends that we have to be above 18 right so that's the condition here that's the condition here we represent using quotes so if and else so if is like if age is greater than 18 you are an adult else like you are a minor right so basically we stored age here 25 now 25 is obviously greater than 18 so this becomes true if this is true this this is executed else this part is executed simple so it's basically like that so even if uh, you'll have like else if case but in this case uh, we don't have it applicable uh, like else a is greater than 13 you'll get you're a teenager so uh, let's say this in this case what they executes yeah uh, like you you got it right age is greater than 18 so that's why it's uh, adult so now let's change the age now so let's change age to 13 what it executes you're a teenager when we execute Sorry, my bad. Here we put A. It should be A's. So A is equals to 13. Uh, we'll get here. You are a teenager. So yeah. We many instances we just have a typo in that and we keep debugging for hours. All those things are very common in programming. Uh, like you just need to go with the flow and debug. So for uh, like here, uh, here teenager, right? Like you understand. Like A is equal to greater than 13. That's why he is a teenager. So basically, if some condition is true, then only it can execute. So only if and if has a condition, else case don't have condition here as we see. So basically uh, either like the flow is like either this should execute or this should execute or if not, this will execute. So if none of the conditions is true, else part gonna execute. Okay. So next is loop. So basically you want to perform something more than once. How do we do that? Like you can't say like. Let's say uh, you gave your teacher gave you some punishment, right? Let's like write some something as a ten times. How do you do like in national? Like you write something as a let's say some name. Uh, we call it some like John. One second, let me just take the pen here. So we call it John. So John to be written for ten times. So this is how we write in uh, manually. So as a programmer, you should be smart enough. So you can do this using one line. So we just need to say like how many times we can execute it. So let's say range is 10 times we need to execute. Then we keep our range is equal to 10. Uh, and then range is like how, how much far you need to go. Like think of like that. So we just need to say in Python what we need to do is for range in for like some variable of some variable we have to uh, get this range value right at the current iteration. So iteration is like just like current execution of the loop. So for uh, so underscore in range of 10, we want to print John. Then for that uh, 10 times, it would print John. Simple, you are a programmer, right? You have to do efficiently. So here, let's go here. And then uh, we'll say for five times only I took. So I'm printing I. So you will get to know what is I value in each iteration. So first it starts with zero. So you're printing with zero and then till four you print. So why I, uh, you know, this is very interactive. Why I kept this Google Colab is like you understand the functions as well. So here it just has Jupyter nodes. You don't need to install anything. You can just run it web. So here, if you click the shift tab at once, uh, you'll get to know when you do shift tab, we get the function. How is it internally defined? So here we see arcs and quarks. So it's keyword arcs and arcs. So, okay. Basically you provide start, stop and step. So let's say you want to iterate only like you skip something, then you provide steps. Uh, stop is until like what you want. Let's say you want only from one to five, you provide this one. So you see here, this five is exclusive. So to include five, we want to say plus one. This is a basic thing in programming, okay, in Python. So it doesn't applicable for uh, other, like it's not there in other languages though, this range function. So in Python, uh, the range, uh, the stop value is exclusive. You know, right? here as we see, we have step value, right? So step is something what like we have to increment for each iteration, right? So for that, uh, we just need to, let's say we want to go in steps of two, we have to mention step is two. So here we see, right, the step is two. Step means like it each iteration, it takes like two addition here. Like it's just like addition, for, uh, like uh, adds two to the uh, range. Like it basically, you know, uh, like it skips one value in between. So that's how it is. So guess what the output is 135. 
right so basically it has kept like 2 and 4 now so it it goes in like jumping like two steps at a time so just like that if you put 3 so guess what we'll get only 1 and 4 skip 3 each time so 1 plus 3 is 4 and then plus 3 is 7 which is out of the range that's why it's not printing so we'll get only till 1 comma 4 so till how how much the range is possible then uh, that only it will print so hope you got the idea of loop uh, for loop so uh, there is also while loop we should keep this variables like inside this variables outside of the loop let's say i is equals to 1 so here you see right this is giving a recommendation this is given by gemini so this is integrated with gemini so that's why i choose this one so here uh, let's say while i is equals to 1 i less than 5 we print so this is also here a conditional check basically uh, the condition is what like it checks for each time so only this condition is true then this loop is executed for this many times so while i is equals to 1 and i less than equal to 5 we get this uh, printed like print printing i and then i is equal to i plus 1 we doing the increment so uh, in the for loop uh, we saw that increment happens inside the range function so here we are explicitly doing the increment operation okay and then here if you see in here the syntax is like we have the indentation indentation is very important in python so basically everything is indentation only we don't have flower braces so here uh, like this is like colon right this after colon we the, like any conditional checks we keep the colon and after colon uh, like we just hit enter and then uh, we we'll, we can just type whatever the code we want so here uh, here we type print and this is how like the indentation uh, like to be maintained like at least this four spaces indentation to be maintained for python even if this is we keep it like this it would work okay but it is four spaces only to be like it's a standard we have to follow only four spaces even if we keep like this space also it would work but it's all about indentation okay hope you got the idea the standard is only four spaces though even two spaces work So next is solving a DSA problem. So DSA you understood right? Data structures and algorithms. So using the what data structure we define our algorithm. Okay, that's how it is. Okay. So uh, here like first one uh, we have this problem one. Uh, this is a design a calculator. So calculator you know right? What all functions it has to do? Calculator it has to do addition, it has to do subtraction, it has to do multiplication and division. So I keep it very simple for you. Now pause the video and think of how to write in Python because based on these above steps only we can write it. And uh, you taking input what i'll tell you how to do so pause it here and think of how to do it we have the condition statements here we have the loops here but we don't use loops this is the clue i'm giving so just think of it and then type it uh, so like you have it somewhere in your mind and then like you jot down and then you type in the comments so that i will see like what is correct or not and after some like 30 seconds or that like you, you can get the thought process maybe so uh, after that like you can put in comments below Okay, hoping you got the idea and we put in comments. I I'm just continuing it. Uh, as I said, like we need to take the input. So how do we take the input from the user? We have input function. So let's say we have this input, right? L let me just take a code snippet here. So input. Uh, when we execute this, what it asks? It it gives a prompt to the user. So input five, right? So this the input we give, and this like it uh, it takes as a string. So that's why we need to convert as a float float is the maximum precision uh, like we have right with uh, the decimal points it takes so everything which is taken as an input it would be a string so that's why we have to type cast it to whatever we want so let's say we put the type of it um, we'll print we'll i'm doing it like cascading everything so that you will get idea of like what we can do so first it executes like internal input and then type and then print okay i'm doing five So it is clustering, simple, right? You got it. Like you, you know how to cascade now, right? So our calculator. What do we want to design? Let's say we take the operator as an input. Uh, we 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 need to take three things, right? First number, second number, and the operator. Operator can be plus, minus, or and this division operator. Okay. So basically, uh, let's uh, let's go here. So if the operator is given as plus, what we need to do? We need to do the addition. So plus means addition. So how do we do that? Using a plus b, we have to write in code, and then next we they give you subtraction. Uh, we need to uh, do uh, like subtraction. So a minus b, just like simple English, we need to translate to Python here. 
So we need to do multiplication. What I told for multiplication, the operator is uh, asterisk, right? We need to do this one. So division. So we represent division in math using this one, but in uh, coding language, we represent using this uh, like slash. So that's how. That's what we need to do when they want this one. We have to do the division. So that's all. Like uh, let let let's go to the code. How how do we do that? So I just commented this. So uh, let me uncomment this. You see this highlighting, right? These are basically the keywords it highlighting. Okay, all these are keywords in Python. Keywords is reserved words. Like you can't use if uh, in your variables. That's the main point to keep track of. So okay, here uh, num one is equals to float of input of enter the first number and num two is equals to float of input of second uh, number. So basically, we take the numbers num one and num two and the operator. So enter the operator from this uh, different operators. Okay, if the user enters these operators, what we need to perform if the operator is equal? So we are checking the equal to case. right we just uh, need to like you know the condition right is this the equality check uh, like uh, this is the assignment is single equal to is assignment double equal to is a equality check Who keep track of this okay so if operator is equals to plus we need to do the uh, addition similarly minus we need to do the subtraction so similarly uh, star we need to do the uh, multiplication here for operator is equal to division we need to do the division but division we need to have some basic check right basically if num2 uh, is like zero Uh, it's a divide by zero error, right? That's why we we don't do that actually. So we we have a safe check here. So this is how you handle the errors in programming. Else, like it would give you error. Let's say like I, I'll show you, right? If one divided by zero, it will show some error, right? Zero division by zero error. This is the exception we got. So to handle that case, we are checking if num is not equal, num two is not equal to zero only. We do this execution. So here basically we checking if else operator is equal to division operator. uh we we checking like if num num is not equal to 0 then only perform the division operator else like uh, you send the result as can't divide by 0 and then if operator input is none of this we have to handle that error right so in that case we send the invalid operator so basically this is error handling kind of so there is a exception handling also try uh, and catch so we will explore that later but uh, we are just saying the basic things here right now so here we display the result so the result is like this Uh, so firstly uh, we enter the number 1 so then we hit enter next like we hit 2 we hit enter and then uh, we choose operator like let's say plus the result is 3 so we execute it again just shift enter you can execute it let's say 1 now 0 we choose the division operator what do you get like the result is can divided by 0 so this statement got true how it got true basically first is going to this flow else operator is equal to this one so it goes to this one and then this condition is not true so this case executes and then the result is given as can't divide by 0 so here the else case is like they give the invalid operator let's take that case as well so let's take one let's take one here for num2 and let's hit enter any random number i'm uh, just taking one so operator is none of this given operator so that's why what we do uh, we choose like uh, to return the invalid operator so because basically we check the operator right is equal to is equals to like equality we checking so none of this holds true so then this case executes next is uh, the quiz okay so uh, this is the quiz for today what is the output of the following code put that in comments and then next is what is the if i mean python so i we discuss about data types int and float right so comment for part 2 and then in part 2 we will try to explore some more uh, data structures and then some more things about python and then we'll go to lead code and solve one basic problem so that you will get a confidence of solving to lead code so hope you got idea of how to use this so i'll put the link to this notes in uh, description so you can end, uh, you can just uh, view this and you can make a copy of it it's just a drive link uh, to you okay uh, and then comment for the part 2 so basically uh, share with your friends and uh, juniors so dsa is very important and then this is like a placement most asked thing if you are fresher even if you are experienced also for switching the companies you require the jsa so you you, you share with the friends and juniors and who are in the college so that like everyone would be learning so create a competitive environment for yourself that that will be helpful because like if some other person is learning in your group you will also start learning that's what happens in iits and nits okay even if you're not from iits you'll get a good job if you have a competitive environment around you feel that com competitive sense around you that will only gets you uh, like go reach top level 
so the computer spirit is important so that's why this is called a computer programming okay you should keep uh, like dsa like we have computer programming using dsa okay that basically you have to compete with other coders so to compete with other coders like uh, like within your college if you want to compete you have uh, platforms like geeks for geeks there you have a, like you can enroll and then write code and then it shows ranks in our college so basically have some competitive environment uh so that will help you to go for in your career uh, so it competition is what makes you succeed okay so yeah that's it for this video see you in the next video